So if you have a 3D printer, then you've undoubtedly printed dozens of benches, if not hundreds. And the reason for that is it's a great benchmarking tool, but it's well known that for most printers, it will take about an hour to print a benchy. Well, I have an outrageous claim. I printed this one in 15 minutes and I did it using that. This is the Chidi XSmart 3. And in this video, I'm gonna talk all about it and you might wanna consider buying this one. So let's get started. Hey there, Steve here and welcome back to my workshop. Now Chidi reached out to me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, we've got a new line of 3D printers and we're wondering if you wanna have a look at them. They're all Core XY. The lowest price one is right in the sweet spot for, for you know, the, the entry level of 3D printers. And they said, most importantly, this printer will print a Benchy in 15 minutes. Now, most people know it takes an hour, so you've got to be skeptical. But when I fired this, this 3D printer up and I loaded the G code that they sent me for this 15 minute Benchy, I was shocked. Uh, I'll show you some video here of the printer going. This is all real time and you will be amazed. Uh, now, it, make no mistake, it vibrates a lot. It makes a lot of noise because it's moving along pretty quickly. But it does print a Banshee in, in my case, 15 minutes and two seconds. So that was really impressive. Now, let's be honest here. Uh, the G code they sent me is definitely cooked pretty hard. Uh, they optimized this, this G code probably manually in every single way they possibly could. And you'd think, well, okay, but they're, they're kind of faking it. But the reality here is when you look at this Benchy that I showed you at the start close up, you will see every layer is consistent. There's very few flaws in this, uh, in this Benchy. Now, they did, they did optimize it, so there's no smoothing. There's, there's thicker uh, layers, so you can't read the lettering on the back of the boat, but it's amazing. So now what I wanted to do in this video is, is look at all of the details of this XMART3 printer and show you really all of the things it's capable of. Uh, we'll, we'll look at a few prints, uh, both in, in time-wise and close-up detail, just to see really how good this printer is. And at the end, I'll give you my opinion, some pros and cons, and uh, you can decide whether you're, if you're in the market for a 3D printer, whether you want this one. All right, so if we do just a quick product fly around here, we'll see that this is a completely enclosed cabinet door on the front, uh, removable lid on top, and we'll, sh we'll talk about that. And uh, you can see inside, uh, being a Core XY, the table moves up and down. I mentioned you can remove the lid. Now moving around to the back, we have the power cord and the switch. The switch is kind of in the wrong place, but it works. Uh, our spool holder and a uh, runout sensor, and then it runs through a tube up to the top. Uh, looking inside, we have uh, 185 by 185 plate, which you can remove, of course, PEI plate, and fits in there nicely. There's some, some nice uh, locking mechanism there. Uh, looking at the extruder, you can see it's pretty enclosed. It's a nice, neat package. Uh, that blue uh, pin hanging down at the back is the proximity sensor, which is used for autofocus. Continuing on here, we'll look at the gantry. You can see they replaced the stainless steel rods with carbon fiber, so it's really light. And you can see the two belts that are uh, used to create the Core XY capability. And then finally on the cabinet, you can actually remove the cover off the top of, of the, the box. And that not only gives you access to the top of the extruder and the, and the guide tube that runs to the back, uh, you can also remove this when you wanna print uh, temperature sensitive filament. So things like PLA where you don't want the inside of the cabinet to get too hot, uh, you can take that lid off and, and print PLA better. So the last thing here I'll talk about is, is Clipper. They use Clipper rather than some of the older uh, printer technologies like Marlin. And what Clipper allows you to do is uh, go fast in a sense. It's a much more optimized engine for printing and uh, you can see on the front panel, you have uh, all the navigation that you would kind of expect. So if you want to load or unload filament or turn on the fan, uh, you can go to that second screen, the load screen, and you can do things like set the temperature uh, of both the bed and the filament and uh, you know all the basic kind of functionality. 
All right, now let's talk about slicers. So you can't out of the box use uh, a, a different slicer than what Chidi provides. And they provide one called Chidi Print, which is basically a reskin Cura with Wi-Fi support. And it works well, but I'm not sure what version of, uh, of Cura it's based on. Uh, it's missing some, some of the later features like ironing, for example, isn't in here that I can find. So it could be older, but it does actually work well. And it, it, I like the UI itself. I actually like it a little better than the stock Cura, but you may want to try and use something else. Now, there is only Wi-Fi support here in Cura. There's no uh, Wi-Fi plugin support for the GD on the marketplace for Cura. So GD print is here and it works the same as Cura. So you can drag an image in, uh, do the standard rotation stuff. Uh, you can select uh, how, what the kind of quality you want. So if you want it to print it really quickly, uh, you can see I've made a few changes here, but uh, you can print quickly. Uh, you can then also select your material. Now you may have to customize it, but this incidentally is a good place to look for uh, for the materials that are supported here, uh, ABS, PETG, PLA, and TPU. Uh, I've tried PLA, PETG, and TPU. I haven't tried APS. Uh, I might before I get to the end of this video, but uh, it should work fine, uh, in part because it's a completely enclosed cabinet. Anyway, this is Chidi Print. It works well, and you know you can slice. If I was connected, if the printer was turned on, I would have an IP address up here, and when I sliced, I would, I could say, slice this and put it on a USB drive, or slice it and Wi-Fi it directly over to the printer and start printing. So, very flexible, works well. Now, no 3D printer is worth uh, worth a dime unless it can print well. And I did show you the the 15 minute Benchy. This is using their Rapido PLA that they they included with the printer, uh, and it printed exceptionally well. And keep in mind, 15 minutes. If I printed a high quality Benchy uh, and took that full hour to print it, I have no doubt that it would be exceptional and I may actually do it just for fun. Uh, next, I did a PLA test cube and I did use their, their quick mode. So this was about an eight minute uh, print and I did it just to actually see how accurate things were. So if I look at the y-axis, we're a little bit high, about 20.21 millimeters and about 20 on the x and on the z-axis about 20 as well. So reasonably accurate out of the box. You could tweak all those settings, of course, uh, being a 3D printer. And uh, this was PETG, by the way, if I hadn't already mentioned it. Then next I, I tried uh, TPU. This is actually a design of a golf tee that I use for uh, for a golf simulator. And uh, so you can see it's pretty flexible. Uh, now I did have uh, uh, some settings problems originally when I, when I printed the first one of these. And the temperature was much cooler than the printer wanted, but it was around the same settings as my own uh, Core XY. And all it did was it printed about the first two layers and then jammed up the extruder. Uh, fair warning, uh, if you jam up your extruder with, with TPU, it starts wrapping around the gears inside the extruder. So I spent about two hours tearing down the extruder to, to, and putting it back together before I got, I got it fixed up. But when I ran a temperature of about 260 Celsius, uh, this printed flawlessly. In fact, I printed about five of them just to make sure. And every one of them was fantastic. And finally, I, I did a quick print of, a, of an Ada Linda Singing Dragon. Uh, if you're printing this on in relatively high quality mode on a standard 3D printer, it's probably gonna take five, six hours. Uh, this took about two and a half, so it printed very quickly. And considering that speed, it turned out quite nicely. Not the nicest one I've seen, uh, but it, it looks pretty good for, for just a, a quick print. Now keep in mind, quick print it uses uh, thicker, thicker layers, and if I zoomed in here, you'd actually be able to see the layers. Uh, 
but uh, if you're prototyping, that's what you want. You want something to, to print quickly, and, and it, this printer can certainly do that. All right, so where does this leave us? Well, in summary, it's a great printer, uh, and, and the print quality is uh, really pretty awesome. But we really do need to look in a little more detail, some, some pros and cons. On the pro side, the design here is great. It looks fantastic. Uh, uh, you know, it's suitable to put on any desk uh, if you're uh, running it in your office or something. Uh, the design uh, overall, it uses Core XY, which I personally love. It works well, it's very fast. I didn't talk about filament changing, but the filament changing here is, is trivial. Uh, and it's a simple case of pushing a, a little button on the side of the extruder to cut the filament and pulling it out and then running some new stuff in and hitting the, the forward button and everything else is taken care of for, taken care of for you. So that's, that's a great feature. Uh, and next on the list here, the speed is exceptional. I've harped on the 15 minute Benchy enough, I think, but overall, everything that I printed uh, tended to print quicker. Certainly when, you're, when you've got the quick mode selected on the, on the uh, Chidi print software, uh, things will print fairly quickly compared to other printers that I've seen. Uh, but even with uh, standard quality, the printing overall seems to be a bit faster and I think that's more of a function of, of Clipper being a little more optimized and Core XY just being a faster architecture. So uh, overall, it, the, the, the speed here is, is top notch. Uh, and last on the pro side here, uh, the heating elements in this 3D printer are just amazing. Uh, when you set the temperature to 220, it'll heat up in seconds. Uh, it's very quick. Uh, the bed is a little bit slower, but it's got a lot more, a lot more mass to heat up. But it's still faster than most printers. So, you know, be prepared if you if you're buying one of these. Be prepared for that. Even the the heating is fast. Uh, now, on the con side, were there things I didn't like? Uh, there were a couple of really minor things, and I'm totally nitpicking here because I had a hard time to find things that were actually not exceptional with this laser. Uh, number one on the list here, it does require their dedicated software. Uh, I mentioned that I checked online and some people were saying there's an, an, a USB port built onto the main board. I wasn't able to find it on this one, so they've either removed it or it's somewhere else, uh, but I, I haven't seen it. Uh, and as a result, there's no external USB cable for plugging in to, to print. There is the USB connector for, uh, for USB drives, but that one doesn't work for, for printing. And last on the list here, the power switch. And again, this is a total nitpick. The power switch is not right in the corner of the back of the cabinet. It's kind of in, and it's actually on the other side of the plug from, from the easy side of access. I'm left-handed, so getting to the left side of the printer where the switch is, is, is great for me, but I still have to go over that plug to get to the switch. If you're right-handed, I couldn't imagine how you'd do it because you'd have to reach all the way around the printer, or you'd have to suffer and use a left hand like I do. So. Uh, you know, just a minor thing, but I think they could have done something a little bit better there. Really what they should have done is turn the plug over so the switch is on, on the proper side. Uh, anyway, with that, I, I have no hesitation in, in uh, both using this printer. I may actually retire my own uh, Core XY printer and put this on, on my work desk in my office, uh, but I have no hesitation on recommending it to people. Uh, I was surprisingly pleased with how easy this printer was to use and how nice it actually prints. So I'll put a link to uh, another 3D printer I, I reviewed a while back for comparison. It's an i3 frame. Uh, you can click on the link up above here and watch that video for comparison. And uh, with that, we can wind down. So get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.